a KQED television production. It's like holy mother of comfort food. Throw it down, it's noodle crack. <laughs> you have to be ready for the heart attack on a platter. Okay, I'm the bacon guy, right? <laughs> Oh, it just did one. a jig every time I dipped into it. It just <laughs> completely blew my mind. I felt like I had a mouthful of raw vegetables and dry dough. Oh, yes. please, I want the dessert first. Yes. It, uh, <laughs> told me you had to wait. <laughs> Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru online at Subaru.com. Located at the Southern Gateway to Napa, Jamison Ranch Vineyards offers handcrafted wines, chef's food pairings, and weekly live music. JamisonRanch.com. Oakland International Airport. Offering new flights to Europe, Hawaii, and all across the USA. Oakland International. Park close. Fly on time. With whole toasted sesame seeds, garlic, ginger, and other natural ingredients, soy ve sauces and marinades bring a taste of Asia to your favorite dishes. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. Hi, I'm Leslie yeah. Sabraco. Yeah. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, analytics administrator George Schroeder's eagle eye and seasoned palate have traveled on a freighter, sailing up and down the west coast of South America, around the Mediterranean, and across the Pacific, navigating eateries along the way. And consulting manager Donna McDonald makes presentations to large groups. She's found that using storytelling techniques ensures that pupils remember content. But with food, well, she finds it tells a tale of its own. But first, barbershop owner Christopher Hoof believes that we learn to appreciate different cultures through food. So, of course, his spot boasts Belgian Hofbrau inspiration, French fare, and down-home southern cooking. In Oakland, it's on Broadway, and it's called Luca's Tap Room and Lounge. I love the restaurant business. Uh, I practiced law for five years, but this is way more fun. My name is Rick Mitchell. I'm the owner of Luca's Tap Room and Lounge. I'm also the executive chef. The name of the restaurant is Luca's. It's actually named after my former dog, Luca. She loved steak, and we loved her, and so we named the restaurant after her. We're a restaurant, we're a bar, we're a nightclub. You know, we have many TVs that we show sports on. Plus, I feel like it's a, a good reflection of this community here in Oakland. The modern concept of the menu is that it's what we call Oakland Creole, which means that our menu has dishes that are reflective of the cultures of the people who actually come here and who live in this neighborhood. In the kitchen, I've got our chef de cuisine, Wilson Mendez. He's been with us since the day we opened. Reed Cumbella, who's our front of house manager. He does a great job. We have 16 taps. By and large, our focus is on mild beers. We do sell you know, quite a few wines by the glass as well as by the bottle. We offer half-off bottles every Sunday. I want people, when they come to Luca's, to feel comfortable. And I want this to be the kind of place where you would come and sit at the bar, and when you leave, you know the person you sat next to, even if you didn't know him when you came in. You're coming and drinking with everybody else who's here. Now, Chris, this has a, a very eclectic menu. You've got everything yes. from schnitzel to mac and cheese, Definitely. right? To yeah. mm -hmm. What's your favorite? I'm big on the winter uh, pot pie. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a combination of uh, good vegetables, uh, fresh uh, kale inside, the uh, potatoes are nice and moist on the inside there. And then right on the top of it, it's nice and crusty and brown on the edge, topped with a little cheddar cheese and a little provolone. On the side, uh, some very nice crispy string beans. Uh, are you a vegetarian? Yes, I am. You are? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have over 20 years now, so uh, I really enjoy that. So when I go there, that's typically the dish I'll try, but I, I do 
can try other things on the menu. The kale. I mean, it's boring when you hear kale. It's like, oh, oh no, I love kale. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure, you but know, but it's really good. crispy, topped with a little garlic, mm -hmm. and it's, it really comes out nice with kale. Cooked with perfection. I absolutely love it. All right, and George, when you went. Well, I, I want to say one thing though about when I first opened the door to mm -hmm, Lucas. Mm -hmm. The only way I could describe it is like a tsunami of noise. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was a Golden State Warriors. A bar in a tap room. Uh -huh. Right, it's right. A bar in a tap room. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's not a funeral uh -huh. parlor. Right, I know. The sound yeah. was just unbelievable. Both of us, we just mm -hmm. went back like that. Mm -hmm. Where they sat us was off to the side mm -hmm. of the bar, so it was a little bit quieter there. We could okay. actually hear what the mm -hmm. server was asking us mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the service was very friendly, mm -hmm. extremely attentive, extremely informative. Uh, one of the things that we had was the winter pot pie. Really? It turned out wow. to be very good. good. I found it a little oversauced, mm. a little salty. Okay. I also had the winter pot pie, wow. and that wow. was <laughs> best in show wow, um, out of the things great. that we tried. I went with a couple of friends. I'm glad you liked it. And we tried a smattering. Mm -hmm. um, I also loved the mac and cheese balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. How yeah. can you go wrong? Right. They were piping hot. You're Have you ever had a mac and oh, yeah. cheese ball that wasn't yeah. hot and <laughs> it's not good? Yeah. These were piping hot. You're still on the ball with that. Crispy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they had this dipping sauce with right. a little bit of spice. Mm -hmm. I would go there for that dish wow. Wow. any day of the week. That's good. The steak was great. Uh, we ordered it medium rare. It was medium rare. Mm -hmm. The potatoes that came with it, not so flavorful. Mm -hmm. We probably would have preferred uh, just french fries. Mm -hmm. But we also tried the schnitzel, schnitzel? Mm -hmm. which came out piping hot. Yes. Everything was very hot. piping yes. hot when yes. it arrived mm -hmm. at the table. Mm -hmm. The schnitzel, very crispy on the outside. Uh, meat was maybe a little bit on the dry side. Mm -hmm. The schnitzel came with schvetzel. Mm, nice. Uh, schnitzel and schvetzel. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but schmetzel. I do love schvetzel. Maybe a little bit salty, mm -hmm. but the texture was great. The two went together really okay. nicely. What night did you go? We went on a Sunday. On Sunday, okay. Which I will say was really a nice treat. They had half bottle, uh, half price right. bottles of wine on Absolutely. Sunday night, which yes. was mm -hmm. a nice bonus. Absolutely. A great deal. It's obviously a, a place to eat, but right. you're going there to also drink and enjoy the atmosphere Absolutely. and play pool and mm -hmm. do other things, right? You can do a lot of different things, and that's why the value is so great. I mean, you can shoot pool, you can watch the game, you can play pinball, you can yeah. dance if you want. There's a nightly DJ about five days a week. It is a, a loud place, so you kind of can an anticipate that up, upbeat right. atmosphere, yeah. but at the same time, you can enjoy your food and, and meet some really good people there. It's not a romantic dinner. No, you it's, wouldn't want to go no. and get on your knees yeah. or anything like that, right. but if you're with some right. friends, you're out and you want to have a good time, maybe if you're at one of the local theaters, the Fox or the Paramount, you want to go in for a drink before our show, this is a good place to go to. It's right around the corner, and you can actually just walk to the Fox, which I've done before. What so, else do you, besides the Popeye, uh, what are some other I typically will go into the, uh, the catfish, uh, they, they serve catfish over, once again, kale, nice crispy catfish, good seasoning on it, and something that you can just dip, you know, with the sauce that they serve, eat it with the kale. I mean, it's a really good combination right there. So that's another one of my favorites. And then, of course, the mac and cheese. Yeah, They're I big on that. that. Did you I try that, George? Yes, I did it was that. really, really good. And, and it was four it? different mm -hmm. cheeses all competing for, for Donald. You're absolutely right. And yeah. nobody won. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It was just Real great. balance, was right? Yeah. Had a good yeah. balance to it. Inside, nice yep. and creamy and nice, cheesy. Crusty on the outside, top. crusty top. And Washington. the mussels? The mussels were perfect, actually. Uh, the sauce was not cloying. Mm -hmm. It was very tasty. All the flavors came through. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Good. And it was extremely generous. Big bowl of mussels. Wow. That's yeah. nice. So and that you can have brunch there, too. You absolutely yeah, can. And I've, I've done that quite a few times. After church, I'll stop by, sit in, and, and uh, have a nice brunch. It's always a quiet atmosphere around that time. Uh, I love the eggs with the salmon that they serve. Uh, it's a good combination once again. Uh, so anytime, if you're in that area for brunch, they're there and ready for you. And there's a sriracha Bloody Mary, isn't there? Absolutely. Absolutely, the drinks are very strong. There. Yeah, and one of my favorites is the, I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan, mm -hmm. so they have the High Plains Drifter, uh, so that's one of my favorites. Really good and very strong. Make my day. Yeah, exactly, Make there you day. go, there you go. On the non-alcoholic side, though, with the drinks, mm -hmm. they had, we had two of them, a Bundaberg ginger beer. Oh, okay. Which was just mm. the best ginger beer I've ever had. Wow. And a, a pomegranate lemonade. Wow! Nice. And, and it was just this is how creative this place is. Mm -hmm. Not just the tap room. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. do they do an awful lot of things. Yeah. They, they, you know, when somebody comes up to the table mm -hmm. and tells you that the the churros have a pedigree, <laughs> the person making the churros is from Guatemala. You've got wow. to try these. Mm -hmm. Hot, mm -hmm. small. Dense cinnamon flavor mm. with this side of like semi sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. Just fabulous. Did anybody else have the church? I haven't tried it. I'm going to oh try it. Oh, see, yeah, got definitely. introduced Absolutely. now. Look at yeah, that. Definitely. All right, this is your restaurant. Wrap it up for us, Chris. Um, diversity, excellent food, and with an excellent value. I mean, I think it defines what Oakland is. All right, and Donna, if I were going to a show at the Fox or Paramount, definitely would go back. Um, great value, large portions, and piping hot. All right, and George. 
not a romantic, quiet restaurant. Absolutely. Um, it's a tap room. Mm -hmm. It definitely is that. Mm -hmm. uh, good value, very creative restaurant. Highly recommend it. All right. If good. you would like to try Luca's Tap Room and Lounge, it's on Broadway at West Grand in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-451-4677. It's open every night for dinner with lunch Monday through Friday and brunch on Sunday. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $30. With recipes handed down from generation to generation, George's unassuming eatery has perfected their menu over 40 years. If you're looking for regal Middle Eastern flavors, you'll find them on Divisadero in San Francisco at King of Falafel. We're the only original King of Falafel in the city and anywhere else. My name is Noel Corsa. I'm the owner of King of Falafel in San Francisco. We've been here 45 years. It was a liquor store and groceries and a small deli case near the window. We started with the falafel and the hummus here. We just giving it away because nobody knows what is it. No other place is uh, doing it. We are the only one who introduced it to the city and to the Bay Area. It was just my husband and I and my husband passed away three years ago, so I'm taking care of it now. It's a family recipes, and this, these are the original recipes because we never added nothing into it. All our salads and food prepared and chopped daily here in the restaurants, fresh. It's the key word, fresh. We're like family here, us and the customers. I have people, they still come, and they tell me, we've been here 30 years ago. We've been here 25 years ago, so we must be doing something right. All right, George, this, I mean, this isn't a white, white tablecloth experience. No. This is a place you can go. It's like a deli, almost. Exactly. Um, about four years ago, a new job sent me through a different route <clears> through <throat> the city. And uh, I was at a stoplight and did this and looked. What is this place? You know, look, I just had this beautiful display case with all these fabulous salads. And I'm a bit of a pescatarian, vegetarian like you are, Chris. Mm -hmm. And I stopped in there one time and I got the vegetarian sample plate and put it in front of me. And it was like an aerial view of an amusement park. <laughs> And all of my favorite rides were open. Every single bit of this was good. The tabbouleh, the hummus, the baba ganoush. And I just kept going back there and going back there. I don't even bother to read the menu anymore. Wow. Wow. I just start pointing at things. Really? And they, they are so flexible <clears throat> there, they're so friendly there, they will make you any plate that you wish. It's a real neighborhood place, it's lower Pacific Heights. Uh -huh. It's a great value, so it's always a bit busy. Mm -hmm. and I've never been disappointed there, ever. I had an interesting experience with King mm -hmm. of Falafel. I know I was uh, gonna go for lunch, but it was mm -hmm. tough for me to get there for lunch because I work downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, they close at seven, I think it is. <clears throat> so we went on a Friday night around 5.30, uh, and it was a little bit of a miss. The meat was really dry. Mm -hmm. The falafel itself was good. Right. The pita bread itself, a little stale. Uh -huh. So we actually decided to come back for lunch uh, a couple days later and thought, you know, maybe a place that's really known for lunch, you mm -hmm. shouldn't go for dinner. Right. And we had a much better time the second time around. We ordered the house combo again to mm -hmm. compare mm -hmm. apples to apples, and then we ordered just a plate of half a dozen falafel with the hummus mm -hmm. and put some of that homemade hot sauce along with it, which was really delicious. So I think uh, knowing what to order really improved. And knowing what time to go. Knowing what time to go. Lunch Absolutely. is really the sweet spot there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, dinner is kind of an afterthought. You went for lunch? Yeah, I did. Circled the block a couple times. Was able to find a nice uh, parking area not too far from there. But once I arrived, I was uh, I was very disappointed. Actually, the uh, patrons in front of me, I noticed they were actually cleaning their tables and chairs. Was this at the end of a lunch hour? This, or? this was, exactly. Okay. It was, so uh, it was a busy lunch hour. Yeah, it was came approximately 1.20 when I was actually eating. My, my salad was wilted. Uh, the chicken was dry. It didn't have those 
those traditional flavors and seasonings mm. that's uh, typical with falafel houses. Well, my wife did try the Greek salad, and mm. that's what the you know the chicken looked dry. She said it was in fact dry, and you can actually see the wilting in the, in the lettuce. Not in the Greek salad, but well, with the Greek salad as well. Um, with my salad, it had cucumbers, parsley, a lemon sauce, this type of thing there. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it wasn't very fresh. It didn't have that crispy that's normally associated with those type of mm -hmm. restaurants. So I was disappointed in that. Did he order the wrong thing? Should you? Well, where, what do you think he? Yeah, coming at the wrong it, time? It, it is, it is a thing? matter of taking a sample of a lot of th mm -hmm. different things. Like uh, you, you might fall in love with the spinach rolls that they have. They, the mm -hmm. tabbouleh is fa fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So possibly you just try different things. Yeah, you know, I really yeah. wanted to like yeah. this place, yeah. George, yeah. and I really enjoy hummus. Yeah. I would have liked to have a, a selection of hummus. I'm big on garlic, so I would have liked to maybe a garlic hummus. I also wanted to sit outside. It's all homemade. There's like, salads. Yes. And yeah, hummus. everything. Mm -hmm. Everything's yeah. homemade. And I wanted to sit outside. It was a nice day in San Francisco, so I kind of wanted to sit outside, but that was not an option. So you had to eat on the inside. Right, right. and a lot yeah. of people take it to go. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the falafel. I would say in some ways they actually reminded me of those mac and cheese balls. Mm -hmm. When I ordered the half dozen they were mm -hmm. really nice and crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as piping hot as I would have liked them to mm -hmm. be, but big enough that there was enough inside where it wasn't just all the exterior crispy part. The, the yeah. falafel was definitely yeah. good, so that probably was the highlight for me as well. Yeah. Well they, they mm -hmm. use corn oil specifically mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this, and, and that. I mm -hmm. think that does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And they also add sesame seeds to their mix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The falafel, which mm -hmm. is very different. And what about the spinach roll? First of all, the feel of dough is nice and crispy on the outside, but they use a uh, feta cheese that comes from Bulgaria, mm. which is sharper and much more aggressive mm -hmm. than the Greek feta. It doesn't really take it over. Everything gets along very well, the spinach mm -hmm. and the onion and the, mm -hmm. the cheese, but the cheese really makes it. And you, what about value for you in service? Value definitely there, and yes, the people there were really welcoming and nice, which made it a nice experience. In fact, the first time I felt really bad, and that's why I went back again, because <laughs> right. they were so nice, and I knew that they really put yeah, care into yeah. what they did. So, right. yeah. and homemade baklava and halva mm. rolls. Mm. They have halva rolls with almond on the outside mm -hmm. and chocolate. Yeah, mm. it's a fabulous thing. All right, this is your spot, George. Wrap it up for us. For a neighborhood restaurant in Lower Pacific Heights, good value, fresh, ve extremely vegetarian friendly. Mm -hmm. I think that the King of Falafel can't be beat. All right, and Chris, I, I, I was disappointed, uh, but again, I think I would go back because, like you said, there were some really nice people. They were generally nice. I think I would go back for myself, and hopefully, I would get a, a, a better uh, time there. All right, and Donna, if I were in the neighborhood and looking for a healthy option with not a hefty price tag, mm -hmm. I would go back and I would stick with the vegetarian options mm -hmm. there for sure. All right, if you would like to try King of Falafel, it's on Divisadero at Bush in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-931-5455. It's open for lunch and early dinner Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab for a meal without drinks is around $12. Do you like vodka or tequila? Then you have to give Pisco a try. An historic spirit hailing from Peru, its recorded history dates to the late 1500s. Taking its name from the Peruvian port of Pisco, the brandy distilled from grapes such as Moscatel and Torantel has a taste profile that reminds me a bit of Blanco tequila. Aromatic, smooth, and powerful. Just the way I like it. Though from South America, its local history is rich. In the mid-1800s, Pisco made its way to San Francisco, and by the end of that century became famous in the Pisco Punch, a potent blend of pineapple, Pisco, and limes. The classic Pisco Sour is a frothy cocktail combining limes, egg white, and a touch of bitters on top. With Peruvian cuisine trending these days, Pisco is enjoying a renaissance, and top-shelf brands like Porton and Encanto are leading the way. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. With seafood at the core of the menu, it's no wonder Donna's spot is perched oceanside. Vibrant flavors shine at this Peruvian spot where sophisticated South American sauces are matched with picture-perfect Pisco Sours. Take a leisurely drive along the coast to find La Costanera restaurant. The beauty of this location, you got the mountains on one side, you got the beauty of the ocean on the other side. You can't beat that. My name is Al Gonzalez, I'm the general manager right here at La Costanera restaurant. Peruvian food has many influences in their cooking. For us being 80% seafood, we have our own twist on Peruvian ceviche. We buy whole fish and we break it down here internally so we know exactly what we're getting. We also have our pisco bar. Chef Carlos Altamirano already had his vision when he looked at this place. It was a nice trip that I took with my wife, and then she fell in love with the place. We named it La Costanera. 
My name is Carlos, Carlos Altamirano. I'm chef owner of La Costanera. When I was a little kid, I always worked with my mom. And that's what I do in my kitchen, my cuisine. Recipe for my mom with more contemporary touches. We always use fresh ingredients. We make everything from scratch. Our favorite Peruvian sauce here is the rocoto. Rocoto is a hot pepper from Peru, and we grow it right here in uh, Half Moon Bay. Uh, we provide the guests a, a great experience. This views is breathtaking. Our service standards, and of course, we wow them with uh, our great food. And they can't go happier than that. Thank you so much. Now, Donna, this place is as much about the views and the experience as about the Peruvian cuisine, right? It is. You know, for me, it. I call it going on vacation. Mm -hmm. I can leave my desk <laughs> yeah. in downtown San Francisco uh -huh. and be there in half an hour Definitely. on the beach mm -hmm. drinking a glass of oh, wine. Yeah. And it has great food to boot. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> I love the fact that you can go there and have all kinds of different things. Some favorites are the crab causa. A causa is a sort of a mashed potato. Mm -hmm. This one has some avocado, some really delicious fresh crab mm -hmm. meat, and a little bit of the sauce with the spicy huancaina pepper mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. We also like to get the empanadas, the beef empanadas empanadas in particular. They have a really nice combination of that sweet and savory, just really sort of flaky, mm -hmm. crusty on the outside, mm -hmm. sort of like a comfort food, but I'm at a Peruvian restaurant. And as strange as it sounds, they do an amazing mac and cheese mm. with lobster that also has spice in there, and it just gives it that little bit of kick. We got there about 6 o'clock, and uh, all of the parking lots were full. Mm. So we had to go across US-1 at night. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was quite a kind of an adventure in itself. This is the only negative, by the way. Yeah, the um, parking can be tough. Yeah. Once we got yeah. that out of the way, we were uh, greeted by Alex, our server. Uh -huh. I had Alex as well. And <laughs> this, this fellow gave us the best service oh, I've yeah. ever had in any a, restaurant I've ever eaten. Yeah. Wow, ever. wow. He did bring his A game. I was so comfortable with him. He's proving he's from Lima. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, just, just bring, start bringing us small plates. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you bring us. Just start, bringing, just start feeding us. And he gave us ceviche. He mm -hmm. gave us mm -hmm. tequenos, their little fried wontons with uh, Oaxaca cheese. Mm -hmm. Everything was just fabulous. Oh, man, I had this coconut rice. Have mm -hmm. you tried that? I oh, it just did one. a jig every time I dipped into it. It just <laughs> all the way down. I didn't know whether to <laughs> dip it in the sauce or just eat it by itself. But either mm -hmm. way, the end result was I ate everything. So mm -hmm. it was absolutely good. I enjoyed the combination of the seafood that they have the thick mahi-mahi served with the clams. Very, very good. Calamari is different for me because typically when I eat calamari, it's just calamari. There's nothing on top with it. But with theirs, they had a little bit of uh, cilantro, tomatoes, different kinds of onion there. They had this nice spicy mayonnaise that, that they served on the side with it. And the uh, roasted corn, which was really unique for yeah. me. And so I can kind of lose my, my etiquette there. I can just take everything and just slap it into the mayonnaise and just kind of <laughs> eat it and drink a beer and just have a good time. So it was really, really good. It was served differently for me. Um, the shrimp was a little tough, but that didn't take away from the meal. I absolutely d loved it, and I ate every bit of it. The uh, lobster and asparagus gnocchi, they really do quite an amazing job with it. It's gnocchi that's cooked just perfectly with some asparagus, mm -hmm. uh, very al dente, mm -hmm. really nice lobster pieces, and they use that special pepper in the sauce, so it mm -hmm. has just a really nice kick. Not too much for someone that doesn't like spicy food, though. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. You talked a little bit about ceviche. 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 Yes, well, <laughs> they, you know, they have different types of ceviche, and mm -hmm. it also goes based on the fish of the day. Mm -hmm. So you can do a ceviche sampler platter mm -hmm. or try one at a time. I usually like to do the sampler and just try to see what they have that day. Mm -hmm. um, but the ceviche is very fresh, mm -hmm. um, really just light, fresh flavors. Well, we had the lingcod of ceviche that night. Mm -hmm. And I have had ceviche in Peru mm -hmm. on the beach, and this this was much better than what mm -hmm. I had in Peru. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, it was served in a kind of a bowl, mm -hmm. and it included a sweet potato and corn and onions. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and they carry that Peruvian theme through, certainly with the Peruvian Pisco Sours. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of different delicious cocktails, but you can't go wrong with the Pisco Sour. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, the restaurant was, it was just very calm on that day. I don't know if it had anything to do with sitting on the beach, but it was just so calm. Yeah. After our dinner, I sat there probably another 45 minutes just kind of, you know, sucking up all the things. And like you said, it's, I felt like I was on a vacation. I left there looking for the airport. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I want to yeah, go to really Peru. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have to mention a non-alcoholic drink that I had. Mm -hmm. It's called chicha morada. Mm -hmm. It's made with purple, you know what? Purple mm -hmm. corn, 
cloves, cinnamon, pineapple, and apples. Mm. I went out and got all the ingredients, but I have to make it at home. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, wow. I'm going to have That's to make great. this at home. Yeah. Do you continue on with dessert when you get there, or no? Of course. Yes, of oh, course. yes. Uh, the tre leche pudding is my absolute favorite. It's like a cloud when you bite into it. Sweet, but not cloyingly sweet. Mm -hmm. It was, it was mm -hmm. so good. Uh, topped with pisco sour foam, which was just fabulous. Mm. However, the espresso was really disappointing. It was kind of weak, and mm -hmm. I thought it wasn't up to the standard of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also ordered churros, which after... You're big on churros. <laughs> <laughs> the standard now. I'm afraid after uh, Lucas, the churros food. were a disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chocolate lava cake with uh, some mm. type of pisco ice cream or something there, and then it, it just the sugar rush. You know how when you get that last little bite there? Me and my wife were sharing, you know, we're kind of, okay, who's going to get that last piece, you know? Okay. You got it, didn't no, you? No, well, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of price, what did you think, Chris? Well, I, I, I had no problem with it whatsoever. I mean, you have the view, you have the service, excellent food. I mean, so I, I didn't have a problem with the price whatsoever. I wouldn't call it a great value. It's, it's, it was fairly expensive. However, it's more, not to use a cliche, but it was more of an experience than mm -hmm. just eating there. Mm -hmm. It's a destination. Definitely. Really. You are going it's a little a mini vacation, just like you yeah. said. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, this is your spot, Donna. Wrap it up for us. If you want to be on vacation on a Friday afternoon, 30 minutes after you leave work, you can't beat it. Great food, great drinks, great ambiance. All right. And Chris? Beautiful views, excellent food. I would definitely go back to this place, which I plan on doing. Um, and uh, it was all, overall an excellent experience. I enjoyed it. All right, and George? A bit of uh, peril in the parking. When Once you get that over with, it's a beautiful setting. The food is fabulous. The service is extremely attentive, and it's a decent value. All right, if you would like to try La Costanera, it is on Cabrillo Highway in Montera. The telephone number is 650-728-1600. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $50. So I want to thank my great guests on this week's show, Chris Hoof and the eclectic tastes and taps at Luca's Tap Room and Lounge in Oakland, George Schroeder and the time-honored Middle Eastern staple dish at King of Falafel in San Francisco, and finally Donna McDonald and her oceanfront spot where sweeping coastal views are as spectacular as the food at La Costanera Restaurant in Montara. We really want to hear from you about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So go to our website at kqed.org slash check, please, where you'll find a lot more information and details on all the restaurants featured. You can watch a segment, download a whole show, and read my notes on the wines we're drinking today. They're delicious. And you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive behind-the-scenes clips, pics, and notes from me. We really love hearing from you. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, cheers to you and cheers to you. All right. All right. This show is available on demand and online. To watch an episode, find restaurant information, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Just 45 minutes from the Bay Bridge, Jameson Ranch Vineyards offers handcrafted wines, chef's food pairings, and weekly live music. JamesonRanch.com. Oakland International Airport, offering new flights to Europe, Hawaii, and all across the USA. Oakland International, park close, fly on time. With whole toasted sesame seeds, garlic, ginger, and other natural ingredients, soy vey sauces and marinades bring a taste of Asia to your favorite dishes. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars.
KQED television production.